Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Uh, this right here is an old power supply I've been using. I got it as a handy down, and it works for the most part, but one thing that's been bothering me is I can only get it up to about 10 volts, and I want to see if this thing was actually capable of getting all the way up to 15 volts. I'm not sure if you can see, but the 0, 5, 10, 15 which my thought would be that if this was only a 10 volt supply they would put 10 all the way out here so maybe look inside if there's some sort of adjustment or something that we could look at or these pots need cleaned they're they're, they're pretty crusty and the thing that bothers me you see how the uh, the fine adjustment here moves with the uh, maybe it's supposed to do that, but said, I can't really find any information on the supply. There's no model number or anything. The only thing that it really says on it is it's a Deltron Incorporated. I said the current's pretty crusty too. So uh, first let's check what the uh, voltage looks like and then we'll take uh, check what the current looks like and then we'll open it up. So when you power it on, you get the red light and the voltage adjustment does have an effect on the um, needle on the gauge here, but I said it only goes up to like 10, maybe 11 volts, and we can uh, verify that with a meter. We've got our trusty Fluke 115 here. So it's not a deadly accurate meter, but it works. Uh, go ahead and plug those in and said it's the gauge is showing kind of 11 ish volts and it's reading 10.68 and then we can turn it down so right like the gauge right now is at 5 4.7 so it's not a terrible terribly accurate but it works so now let's check the current output so to do that, we turn the current all the way down to the smallest value and we're gonna switch the, the plug here on our meter over to current and then go to amps. And I doubt this really shows up on camera really well. Uh, well, first of all, the needle here dropped all the way to zero or just about to zero because the uh, power supply is loaded down now so we're actually current limiting it's in constant current mode and now we can uh, slowly turn up the the current and since it's really buzzing now so it'll do 10 ish amps so it, it's definitely capable it's just it's a, the, the vo I'd like to get a little more voltage out of it so uh, now that we've checked that, let's uh, open it up and uh, see what's going on inside. I went ahead and pulled the case off. Here's the, uh, the case. And first I thought these two, I'm sorry, these four screws here in the front uh, held the case on, but I was wrong. If you look at the bottom of the case, there are four screw holes here in the corners here and here, and uh, the case just slides off the back. What was interesting was as I was sliding off the case, I got a surprise. And that surprise was the badge from the key, from the power supply was actually inside. Let me zoom into that a little bit. Let it focus. There we go. So it's a model SP10-10, serial number 23003. Unfortunately, and again, I was not able to find anything on this power supply, even with the model number, this Deltron. They make a lot of open face power supplies, but nothing really that, uh, uh, you know, in lab bench style like this, but the model number kind of suggests to me that uh, this might be a 10 volt, 10 amp power supply. So no matter what I adjust inside, I'm really not gonna get any more out of it. And uh, I think I'm going to change gears a little bit. So we'll, we'll still go through 
and take a look at what's going on inside the power supply. But I wanted to uh, take a little more time and talk about the two functions that we looked at earlier with the, uh, the voltage that we measured with the meter and the current because I'd say this is a great time to talk about the, the constant voltage, constant current type power supply. If you've ever worked with power supplies, uh, there are two kinds of supplies. One is constant current and the other is constant voltage. The most commonly used supply is a constant voltage supply. So let's talk about those first. We're going to represent the supply as just a box. And then we're going to fill in the insides of the box as we talk about the different elements of the supply. The supply then has output terminals. And you can think of these as the uh, red and black connections on the front of the supply. A constant voltage supply, generally abbreviated as CV, uh, will uh, do whatever is in its power to make sure that the voltage across these uh, output terminals stays the same. Uh, when a load is connected or even without a load. So a load is generally represented by a resistor because it's the easiest way to think about what a load is and then you would connect your power supply to your load. So if you took the uh, supply and let's say set it to five volts, the supply will uh, make sure that your uh, voltage across your load is uh, 5 volts. The way it does this is internally, and now we're going to fill in a little bit of the box, you have some sort of voltage measurement device and that device is connected across your uh, output terminals. And the power supply then uses a series pass element. And we'll talk more about what that series pass element can be to regulate uh, the current flowing to your load to make sure that uh, the voltage across that load uh, remains constant, or let's say five volts in the case that we set it. So for an example, if your uh, element is 5 ohms and we want 5 volts across it that means that uh, the series pass element will allow 1 amp of current to flow across the uh, load. Uh, the biggest advantage of a constant voltage supply is that it will do whatever it can uh, to make sure that the voltage stays constant. Uh, the reason why this is a, a, such an advantage is that uh, if you have, you know, a resistor is a pretty hardy device for other than putting too much current through it, you can't really easily damage it. But if you have more sensitive things like microcontrollers or sensors or other things connected, a high voltage could possibly damage them. So the supply makes sure that but that doesn't happen. The disadvantage of a constant voltage supply is that uh, when the load needs more uh, current, the supply will provide it and it will provide it to a fault. So for instance, uh, if you uh, accidentally wired something up uh, incorrectly on this end, uh, the supply will do its darndest to provide the 5 volts, but if it's dumping 10, 15, 20 amps, whatever the supply is capable of, into your project, you could easily burn something up. A constant current supply, on the other hand, uh, works in exactly the opposite manner of a constant voltage supply. And again, we're going to represent the supply as a, a box. And then we're going to fill in the insides. And again, you still have your output terminals. So black and red. Uh, the abbreviation for a constant current supply is CC. 
and in a constant current supply what the supply is doing is that it's outputting a preset amount of current so in our example let's just say it's going to be one amp so unlike a, a constant voltage supply a constant current supply has a series element that senses current but it does have a, a similar series pass element which uh, is doing the controlling what happens is when you connect a load again think of a load as a resistor because this is the easiest way to imagine what a load is uh, if you have a one amp of uh, current and let's say our element is yeah. 5 ohms the supply will measure the current and then uh, adjust with the current being as the feedback the series pass element to make sure that one amp of current passes through your <coughs> Uh, uh, element. What this means is that the supply must be applying uh, 5 volts of voltage here to make sure that uh, uh, 1 amp of current passes through your load. The biggest advantage of this kind of supply setup is that uh, when you have a non-linear uh, elements so for example if we were to replace the uh, uh, load with a uh, light emitting diode an LED uh, the supply will adjust uh, the uh, output voltage to make sure that the correct amount of current passes through the load the disadvantage of this kind of supply is for instance if your uh, element went open mm -hmm. if we erased it, the voltage uh, at the output terminals here will spike as high as the supply can provide. If you actually have a higher voltage supply, you know, 50, 60, 80, 100 volts, you, you would see that uh, voltage across the terminals because the supply is doing everything that it can to push the uh, current into your load, but because the load's not there, it causes problems. As I mentioned previously, the constant voltage supply is uh, far more popular, but the constant current supply has its place, but the real magic happens when you combine the two. And the supply we were looking at earlier is this combination of those two kinds of supply. And again, we can look at this as a, an empty box and we can fill in the elements where we have your output terminals that you can connect the load across but with a constant current constant voltage supply <clears throat> you're not just sensing one kind of operation you're sensing both kinds of operation so this kind of supply would have your uh, current uh, sensor here and you would have that series pass element but you also have the voltage sensing element at the same time <clears throat> the way this kind of supply functions is both of these elements are used to operate your series pass element to adjust the output uh, the thing that makes the supply so advantageous is you set the limits for both your current and your voltage and the supply will uh, switch back and forth between constant current or constant voltage mode to make sure that uh, one of these two uh, limits is met. <clears throat> Let's give some examples. Let's say we want to provide 5 volts at a maximum of one amp. Or let's, let me rephrase that, a maximum of five volts at a maximum of one amp. And then we connect, let's say, a one uh, kilo ohm uh, load across it. Okay. 
like that. To provide uh, 5 volts across a 1 kilo ohm load, uh, you have to flow a current of, what is that, 1, do, 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 1, 2, 3, uh, 5 milliamps. I think I'm doing the math right. I, but it, it's irrelevant in the sense of that oh, uh, 5 milliamps is far less than uh, uh, 1 amp. So you're meeting your uh, 5 volt quota, but your uh, you're not exceeding your one amp quota. If we suddenly change uh, this load from uh, a, a, a one kilo ohm to an ohm, just to raise the kilo ohm <coughs> there, uh, five volts across a one ohm load would give you uh, five amps. And 5 amps is exceeding your 1 amp limit. So the supply will then switch operation from constant voltage, what it was in before, to constant current. So now the supply, instead of using the voltage uh, element, the sensing element as feedback, uses the current sensing element as feedback. And uh, uh, the supply will change the voltage across the load from uh, five volts uh, to a one volt to get to make sure that you don't exceed your one amp uh, one amp limit. This type of operation, the ability to switch from constant current to constant voltage and back again, is really advantageous when you're building up uh, in brand new projects, stuff you've uh, never worked with before, or uh, stuff you're experimenting with, that kind of thing. Uh, the reason why this is advantageous is because, let's say you have a microcontroller project that you built up and it, it runs on 5 volts. So you set the supply to 5 volts. But uh, you know that uh, this is a very low power project, so it shouldn't consume any more than, let's say, a quarter of an amp or 250 milliamps. So you go ahead and program the 5 volts and 250 milliamps into your supply and uh, you hook it up to your project. Again, we're going to look at the load as a resistance, but now just to add a, a little flare in there, what we're going to do is we're going to, we made a mistake when we wired up the project. Let's say one of the buttons. we forgot to pull a pull-up resistor on the button. So you go ahead and you hook the power supply up to your project and the button is normally open. So uh, when you power the project up, you know, you're seeing a, a nice low current draw. Uh, the project is sitting at your five volts and you start experimenting with it and you go ahead and hit the button. <clears throat> And as soon as you hit the button, the supply will instantly hit your 250 milliamp limit and the voltage will drop off. This is the power supply protecting your project. Because this button, uh, it probably wouldn't be happy at 250 milliamps. And if you held it down for a very long time, uh, it'll most likely get hot and uh, melt. But because of the 250 milliamp limit, you don't nearly instantly destroy something. Whereas if you were, if you were using the uh, constant voltage supply and your supply was capable of 10, 15, 20 amps, you would send the 15, 20 amps through the switch instantly when you hit the button because the supply would output its most amount of current to make sure that the voltage uh, didn't sag. And it is in this way that your project is protected. Uh, another kind, and also uh, this type of uh, supply will give you a warning that something is wrong because as you're operating your project, etc., you can see the supply change modes because as you saw on my supply, there are needles that sweep back and forth. You would see uh, the uh, current needle either uh, fly up and the voltage won't fly down or the current one if you were really close to the limit would stay there and the voltage would uh, drop off. 
another way that this can uh, protect your project is uh, if you had wired your project up wrong in the first place. Let's say instead of the button, you wired something wrong and you just had a dead short uh, across it. So as soon as you power up the power supply, the supply will instantly drop down into the constant current mode and that would let you know that, oh, I need to go through and check my wiring or uh, verify that all of my elements because what you can run into is, let's say you had an element, instead of a short that uh, draws more current than you were expecting, uh, this would make you uh, go through and check the <clears throat> uh, different elements in your system uh, so that if this one is supposed to be drawing 100 milliamps, but this one draws 300 milliamps, you'll definitely exceed your limit and drop into your uh, constant current mode. Uh, this also offers a diagnostic tool because let's say you're, as I mentioned, you're in this scenario where one element draws 100 milliamps, the second element draws uh, 300 milliamps, and you've hit your limit as you built up your circuit, you can go through and you can disconnect, uh, let's say, this one. Well, that was the 100 milliamp load, so you know, you'll, you'll see the current still sit at this limit. But then you uh, disconnect the other element and you'll see the current drop off to zero and your voltage come up. Well, we're thinking that something's up with this load. So then you connect your uh, 100 milliamp load backup and your voltage will stay at 5 volts and you'll see that your current didn't go up as high. So this allows you to uh, poke and prod at your project to make sure that, uh, you, know, you know, maybe this element's drawing 300 milliamps because it, it, it was already broken, just as an example. Uh, you know, this protects uh, things from catching on fire, melting wires, you said it's, this is a very useful kind of uh, supply. Now let's pull the curtain back on what the series pass element could be. And there is a bunch of different ways of doing this. I'm just presenting one. And this uh, happens to be uh, the way that um, a typical 7805 a linear regulator uh, performs its regulation. What you find inside are two uh, MPN transistors and these transistors are connected in what's known as a Darlington pair. Uh, these transistors are connected to some type of a voltage sensing element. In this case we're just using a, a basic op amp. And what this op amp does is it senses what the voltage is uh, here uh, at the output Basically, the output would be like the red uh, pin on the power supply. And uh, uh, that voltage is sensed by the uh, inverting terminal. The voltage that you actually want there is set by some type of element that uh, you can set a voltage into. And in this case, we could use, let's say, like a potentiometer. And through op amp action, so to speak, what the op amp will do is it will command these two elements uh, to adjust the output voltage here at the uh, terminal to match whatever the preset voltage is. Again, I want to mention that I oversimplified this tremendously. There's uh, many more elements in here uh, for stability, for uh, adjustability, uh, and uh, the uh, typical Darlington pair uh, for uh, linear regulators it tends to be uh, uh, less favored for a low dropout regulator but again I'm simplifying this tremendously so that I can uh, you know better explain it. Uh, another thing about a linear regulator is that the input voltage up here has to be uh, greater than the output voltage. The reason for this is the op amp is also powered uh, 
uh, from the input. So there's a limit to the kind of voltage the op amp uh, can output. And uh, when you uh, incorporate the uh, voltage across the uh, elements of the Darlington pair, uh, like this, <clears throat> the uh, base to, I think on an NPM that's a collector, base to collector. Uh, I'm probably getting it wrong, but the, uh, the idea behind it is essentially what I'm looking at. Uh, the voltage across these is usually about 0 0.7 volts. So the two of them uh, in effectively series means that uh, the voltage here has to be at least 1.4 volts higher than the output voltage here. So usually uh, your input voltage, they'll round it up a little bit. It has to be between 1.5 and 2 volts greater than your output. Now that we've talked a bunch about uh, how the uh, power supply adjusts the voltage, etc., the next question is, is where does that voltage or power, etc., come from? A typical linear power supply uses a transformer. AC power comes in here, and then a step-down version, uh, a step-down voltage comes out here. And depending on what kind of transformer you have, there are different turns ratios for uh, what the uh, input voltage versus the output voltage are. After you uh, output the voltage, uh, you know, a step-down version of the voltage, you pass it through a bridge rectifier. And I'm not going to get into uh, what the uh, internal elements of a bridge rectifier are, which is just some diodes. You can simply draw a bridge rectifier as AC in here, DC out here. After the uh, DC comes out, You throw on some uh, filter capacitors, and once you're past the filter capacitors, this is the input to the actual regulation portion of the supply. The biggest Achilles heel of a linear power supply is that they're very inefficient, uh, particularly at low voltages. The reason for this can be fairly easily explained with uh, Ohm's law. So let's give an example, and again, we're going to uh, simplify it. You have your series pass element, and that element is uh, outputting uh, some type of power to a load. And uh, the input to the series pass element is the filtered output of the bridge rectifier that we saw before. As an example, let's say we have a 10-volt uh, supply. This means that the uh, voltage here has to be at least 11.5 uh, volts, but usually for uh, uh, protection, well, maybe not protection, uh, so the supply uh, always operates well, uh, this will be closer to uh, 13 or 14 volts. So let's say uh, 14 volts. <coughs> And we want to output uh, five, I'm sorry, well, let's go, we're going to output one volt. And our uh, load here is a one ohm load. <clears throat> that means uh, one amp of current is flowing this way. Here's the basic problem. Uh, Ohm's law has to hold for uh, this circuit to function properly. So we already know that we have a uh, one volt here and we have a zero volt here. So the voltage drop across this element is plus minus one volt. Ohm's law tell tells us that uh, all of the source voltage has to be consumed through the circuit. 
So the series pass element here is has to be dropping um, 13 volts. So at this 13 volts, you're, uh, you're dropping the 13 volts to get your one volt here. If you do the power calculations for this, this 13 volt uh, series pass element is passing one amp. So if we do uh, uh, the voltage times the uh, current, we get that this element is dropping 13 watts. And 13 watts doesn't sound like a lot, but this would get quite hot. If we uh, push this example even further uh, by reducing the uh, load uh, here, so if we go to a half a gnome or a quarter of a gnome or a tenth of a gnome, but we still want to maintain that one uh, volt across it, your current's going to go up and the series pass element gets hotter and hotter and hotter. It Essentially, it burns off the excess that uh, the load is not consuming. Something that linear supply manufacturers do to compensate for this Achilles heel that we talked about is instead of using a single uh, tap transformer, they use what's called a multi-tap transformer. What that looks like is you have your input windings but then at the output, instead of having just a single element that comes out, you have multiple elements. <clears throat> With these multiple elements, you can choose what kind of voltage comes out of the element. So for instance, uh, on a range of, let's say, a zero to five volts, we would need about seven volts. So we could, we could make this winding an eight volt winding. And this would minimize the power dissipation in your series pass element. But then you, let's say this is a, a 15 volt supply. So then the second winding uh, for the uh, elements, uh, you know, for the voltages of five to 15 volts, let's say this is a 20 volt <clears throat> winding and you can kick over to the next winding when you uh, uh, you know uh, go to a different range uh, oftentimes supplies like this you'll hear relays uh, clicking inside as you adjust the knob for voltage uh, this isn't the case with the uh, supply we were looking at because I didn't see any relays in there. But uh, when you do hear relays click over, be aware that this is what the supply is doing. Uh, yet another sort of trickery here is that you can actually put these two windings in series to get an even greater voltage. So you can save yourself instead of having a, you know another range for you know 25 volts, you can put the two windings in series to get an even greater voltage. Something to be aware of, and this more so falls into nice to know versus good to know, is that supplies have quadrants of operation. A typical supply operates in the first quadrant. This means that the supply will supply a positive voltage and positive current. You know, 80 to 90% of supplies will normally fall into this quadrant. The reason why it's good to know what kind of uh, uh, supply you have is that when you run into a scenario where your uh, project, uh, maybe it's battery powered or you, um, uh, it has some sort of uh, operation that you're not expecting or whatnot, is that uh, when you have the supply, the supply can actually also sync current versus just sourcing it. A supply that can sync current would then fall into quadrant four. <clears throat> you still have a positive voltage, but now the supply becomes a sink, so your current becomes negative. Uh, to have a two quadrant supply like this, one that operates in quadrant one and quadrant four, uh, requires having a second uh, pass element, but this element goes from uh, 
the output to uh, uh, ground, and I'll draw that after we uh, finish uh, talking about this a little more. But it, it's uh, important to know how your supply will behave when you have a situation like that, whether the supply can operate in just quadrant one or quadrant one and four. Uh, more fancy supplies can operate in quadrant two and quadrant three. And it might be, confu you know, so let's just, for example, uh, quadrant one is a source. Quadrant four is a sink. Quadrant two is a sink, but it, it's kind of hard to see how uh, quadrant two is a sink. The easiest way to think about it is if you have, if you're sitting in quadrant three, you have a negative voltage and a negative current, which makes this a source. But when this is acting as a source to transition from quadrant three to quadrant two, your voltage still stays negative, but your current goes positive. So if this was a source, this becomes a sink. Generally linear supplies, uh, because they use a transformer, they're isolated at the output. And uh, you can actually take the terminals on the supply and flip them the other way. And that would essentially move you from quadrant one to quadrant three. And if your quadrant one supply could operate in quadrant four, your quadrant three supply then as you, you know, flop the terminals around can operate in quadrant two. If your supply, as I mentioned, is only a quadrant one supply, you will have your output terminals here and you will have your series pass element here like that. Uh, the thing about the series pass element is at most it can either be fully on, which uh, sources as much current as the supply can, or it can be fully off, so you, this can be regarded as a open. This is a quadrant one supply. For a quadrant uh, uh, four supply, you would then have another element that sits here. This uh, element then can, uh, if this one goes fully open, this element can now uh, shunt power away from your load and uh, dissipate it here. So this, you know, when this element is on, current flows in this way. If this element is off and this element is on, current flows this way. The documentation for your supply should be able to tell you whether it's a one quadrant, a two quadrant, or a four quadrant supply. Now that you know a little bit more about uh, these kinds of power supplies, we can come back and take a look at what's going on in this one. The, the biggest thing in here, this right here, is the main transformer. And as I mentioned earlier, I did not see any uh, relays in this that would switch between uh, different ranges possibly. Uh, but there are some smaller taps coming off over on this side, which I'm not 100% sure where they go because there's also a little bitty transformer right here, which po could possibly be coming off of those taps maybe now that I think about it, uh, this could possibly be powering some of the electronics on board. Uh, this guy, uh, we did see some date codes and I'll show you those uh, in a little bit here, which uh, this thing is old enough that uh, everything is done in discrete components. There aren't any uh, integrated chips and a lot of it is done with point to point wiring. Uh, as you can see the uh, bridge rectifier Actually, I'm sorry, I guess it is a bridge rectifier. Let me zoom in on that a little bit like that. Uh, right here, we have four diodes, one, two, three, four. And these four diodes are tied together uh, to form the bridge rectifier for what's coming out of the transformer here. Uh, 
this is a filter capacitor. I believe this is on the output, but uh, we can measure the voltage on that to see if it is or not. There's another larger capacitor down here. It's kind of hard to see. Let me, let me see if I can get a better shot of that. There we go. See, there's that other uh, capacitor there. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, sides of this. As you're looking at the front, the front's right here. Uh, this is the right side. Uh, from what I've been able to figure out, this looks like the board that controls the voltage. And I've had a play around with these pots here. And uh, this thing, uh, they do influence the voltage slightly, but not very much so. So, uh, this and the board on the other side uh, seem to be the only actually integrated PCBs and uh, this kind of looked like it was uh, hand taped. It's kind of hard to see uh, through the camera as to what uh, the uh, traces under there look like, but with the light and the naked eye, and so they're, they look hand taped possibly. Uh, a lot of point-to-point -point wiring. This is kind of indicative of the era this was built in. And uh, let me see if I can get, uh, get a good image of one of the components here. There we go. Uh, this is a transistor. I did look up this number, the 37792. I wasn't able to find anything on it. Uh, there's another, there's a few components on the other side. Uh, that I was able to find some info, but uh, right here you can see this is a date code. If you're not familiar, the way electronics tend to be coded is it's year followed by week. So this component was made in 1966, the 42nd week of 1966. So this supply is surprisingly old. I said it's from 1966. And looking at the day codes on the other components in here, they're right about that 1966. This back here appears to be one of the uh, series, those uh, series pass elements. Uh, same number as we saw previously, the uh, 37792. And you can see the date code is 42nd week of 1966, uh, just like that other one. Uh, the reason why I think of this is the series pass component is if I zoom out a little bit, uh, there's a big heat sink here on the back. You can hear it right here and uh, the series pass elements are going to have going to be dissipating the most amount of power compared to everything else in here so these really need a good uh, heat sinking now we're looking at the underside of the power supply again the front is right here and you can actually see the uh, two potentiometers and uh, looking at them these aren't actually uh, set up as a potentiometer these are set up as a rheostat uh, let me get a better uh, look at that and show it to you if you're familiar with uh, potentiometers a potentiometer has three terminals one two three in here and uh, you apply a voltage to one terminal ground to the other terminal and then you bring the uh the signal out of the uh, third terminal in this case you would be adjusting the voltage that uh, you want the supply to see but in this case if you can see the uh back here we have this wire well, let's just say this wire's coming in and this one's going out because this is a, they're using this as a rheostat, it's really irrelevant. But you see this wire comes in and then these two back here, it's kind of hard to tell. Let me see if I can get a better angle on it here. Uh, these two are linked together. And then uh, from this middle one, that link comes all the way up here. And then said, so if this was the input, you go through one set of contacts for to get resistance instead of uh, voltage. Come over here, this is the input again, and this guy is ganged together with a wire with this guy, and it comes out this wire right here. So for both of these, they're actually using these as uh, rheostats and not potentiometers. R the difference being a potentiometer will give you variable voltage at the output, and these guys give you variable resistance at the output.
if we change angles a little bit, we can uh, better see the uh, those multiple transformer windings that I mentioned. And they're uh, right here, which uh, these go up to that first element, that first date code I showed you, which uh, I believe is a transistor. There's one here, and I believe that's a smaller transistor. But again, uh, due to the age of this thing, it's kind of hard to find uh, some of the part numbers. That 377 number doesn't come up with anything uh, anywhere else. Uh, now we're looking at the uh, left side of the power supply. Again, the front is over here, and we see the other series pass element here. Uh, it's possible that they're set up as a Darlington pair, but more likely these two are in parallel with each other. And uh, we're uh, still seeing similar date codes. This guy's uh, 42nd week of 66. This guy's 42nd week of 66. Now if we zoom in a little bit, we can see probably our first recognizable component like that. Uh, I did find uh, what this is. Uh, Delco is a General Motors company. Uh, this is a uh, NPN transistor, the uh, DTG uh, DTG twenty four hundred, and again similar day codes as the fourteenth week of uh, nineteen sixty six. Looking at uh, this board right here, this seems to be the board that does the current control. That the uh, current control knob seems to uh, come over to this board right here. And the, this is the second PCB that we looked at in here. I did have a play with this potentiometer and it's kind of hard to tell, but the they do have some paint marks on them. So you can uh, put them back like that uh, put them back to where you started with that uh, these marks right here can uh, line back up so if you have a play with it you can uh, uh, always put it back to where you started with so you don't mess anything up coming back to the bottom here again we see the uh, these are the uh, potentiometers that are used as rheostats to adjust the uh, voltage and current if we carefully look down here this is a resistor. This is a, uh, I believe that's a 10 watt resistor, a 10 watt 4 ohm resistor. And this one, this one, uh, this one, and there's another one kind of hiding under here. Uh, they are all in parallel, so that would give you a 1 ohm resistor. And uh, these are being used as the current sensing, so they're used as a shunt. The idea being is uh, current has to pass through these resistors and by measuring the voltage across these resistors, you can tell how much current uh, is coming out of the output, which is over here. Now we're looking at the top again and you can see a big wire wound adjustable resistor in here. You, this uh, is the adjustment port over here. Uh, I have not been able to find uh, exactly what this is used for because whenever you run the supply, I'm not getting any kind of voltage drop across these. So that's kind of a mystery here. Uh, something that is kind of nice to see is if you look right down here, let me try and zoom in on that a little bit. This guy right here is a thermal element that the uh, this element, uh, if this heatsink gets too hot, will actually open and it's like a bimetallic spring and it will shut off the supply. That kind of protection is actually kind of surprising for me in a supply that's this old. I figured they would just let it do whatever. A couple of other things that I wanted to mention is that if you look at the back of the supply, uh, the supply can work as, uh, it's the best word, uh, in like a rack mount type situation because the outputs aren't only on the front, they're also on the back here. Uh, another thing to mention is that uh, the uh, this type of supply has the ability to do what's called remote sensing. 
For example, if you're trying to uh, provide a five volts at uh, five amps uh, out somewhere in the, the boonies, you know, with long wiring or something like that, it's possible that the wiring has enough voltage drop so that when the load, when the power, so to speak, arrives at uh, your load, uh, the voltage has dropped below the five volt. So what you do is you disconnect this S plus, which is sense plus and the sense minus, and you connect them all the way out at the load. So uh, the supply will uh, adjust the voltage as necessary all the way out there. Uh, there is also a current sensing uh, lead right here that uh, you can uh, sense the current remotely as well. Because I don't have any kind of manual for this or anything, uh, some of the, uh, what the V plus and V minus terminals, it's kind of difficult to say uh, what they do, but it was just interesting to see that uh, you can remove these links and run the supply uh, uh, from the back panel because uh, you don't have to use the front panel. The final thing I wanted to close out with is I wanted to show you how you actually set the current on the uh, constant current portion of the supply uh, because the supply can't actually tell you, you know, if I turn it on, adjusting the, the current knob doesn't actually tell me what current I set it at. And the way you do this is you get a banana to banana connector like this. You go ahead and you turn your current knob down to the smallest amount and you go ahead and you short out the output because this will throw as you saw the the voltage needle when it uh, dropped off and now the thing is in constant current mode and in constant current mode now we can adjust the current knob to set let's say i want a four amp limit as you can tell these pots aren't the greatest but now we're set at a four amp limit and when i go ahead and pull this current drops off and the supply I had it adjusted to about five volts jumps over to five volts. So now I know that uh, I have set the supply to a four amp uh, constant current, five amp constant voltage limit. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully that was an interesting look into uh, power supplies, uh, how they work, what their uses were, etc., and the little teardown of this uh, Deltron supply, for which, first of all, it said it was surprising that we found the, uh, the, the tag for it inside, which I'm probably going to just tape this on the outside somewhere, maybe like right here or something like that, and that the supply was from 1966. I wouldn't have guessed that the supply was that old. My guess would have been uh, mid-70s. I would have been wrong, I guess. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can always uh, ask them down below. And go ahead and give me a nice thumbs up on uh, YouTube.